Well, when the Montana Grizzlies just took the field a moment ago, the roar from the crowd was as loud as the one that was heard when the Vikings took the field. A strong contention of Montana fans here at PGE Park for tonight's ball game. And they're expecting close to 12,000, possibly, between 10 and 12,000. This will be, for sure, by far the biggest crowd they've had uh, all season long, as is expected when Montana is in town. Grizz fans travel well, and they're here in force today. The Montana Grizzlies looking to stay atop the Big Sky Conference, and this uh, Portland State team comes in a little bit down, maybe a bit shaken. The past two weeks, Bob, they've had fourth quarter leads slip away. They were up 20 to 10 against Northern Arizona a week ago with seven minutes left and ended up losing that game on a last second field goal by NAU's Paul Ernster. But uh, this Montana Grizzly team, as we said a couple weeks ago, what a huge win at Eastern Washington and they're trying to maintain that momentum. Yeah, it's a big game for the Grizzlies to maintain uh, their lead in the Big Sky Conference, but for Portland State, a big game for them, too, to show that they're a contender possibility and that they've lost some games they probably should have won. Coach, uh, offensive coordinator for Montana uh, mentioned to me during the during the week that this was a very scary game. Kind of an interesting word that he used on the eve of Halloween, but uh, he called it very scary. Let's take a look at the Big Sky Conference standings there. Of course, the Grizzlies tied atop the league with the Montana State Bobcats, and today, Montana Montana State is at Northern Arizona, and that game is tonight, uh, later on this evening. And uh, Weber State and Idaho State are playing today in Sacramento State uh, against Eastern Washington. We'll have some score updates uh, as we continue this afternoon with Bobby Houck's team looking to get another win. And as you said, uh, the Montana staff, very um, respectful, I guess, all week could be the term to use towards this Portland State team. A team that one and three in Big Sky play should be should be three and one uh, because of the, of the way they lost leads the last two weeks. So this is a very good team. They're incredibly strong against the run. We'll talk about their defense throughout the day. Uh, they're very good up front and a pair of good, uh, tough linebackers. So the Montana Grizzlies definitely no gimme here tonight, but there's never a gimme anymore in the big sky. Well, the Grizzlies are going to get a chance to do exactly what you mentioned, Tom, test themselves against the run. They won the toss and I believe deferred and now Portland State will get the ball. So right off the first kickoff, Montana's defense will have a chance to do what their goals are. And number one on their list this week was stuff the run. Number two was deny the pass. And number three was attack the quarterback. So we'll see how they prevail there. So Pete Sloan set to kick it off and deep for the Vikings. That's number 20, Ryan Fuqua. And number one is Sean Botterford. Botterford is uh, the top receiver for this Vikings team, and he can fly. Sloan has had a great leg this season. He's been a great addition to this kickoff team. He tees it up and lets her go. And it's a high, deep kick. And that's why they brought him on the road trip. And it'll be taken at the 20-yard line is where the Vikings will set up shop on this first possession. Our referee today in the white hat, that's Rich Rose. And there was a flag on the kick. I think they're gonna call an offsides there and re probably a re-kick here. Well, about five yards and re-kick. Well, it was, it was eight yards in the end zone, so we'll see if it ends up three yards after a five-yard penalty. It's Montana offsides, couldn't catch who the number was, and the Grizz will kick it again. It's a sign of a little adrenaline going as the players want to get down the field. And again, when you're limited to uh, the number of players that they can take on the road, your, your travel roster is much uh, smaller compared to what you can have at home. You have to decide who to bring, who to leave at home. And, and this year, after the, after the first road game, Bobby Houck decided to take Pete Sloan. Um, he does the kickoffs, of course, and Dan Carpenter is the place kicker for Montana. Uh, but Sloan has the leg, and he's been a great weapon, as we've seen on that last kick. See if he can muscle it up from five yards back. Going for it all again. This one's going to be brought out. Fuque from a yard deep. He's got a blocker. Bottleford lays a block. He's to the 30, across the 40, and Fuque gives the Vikings great field position. 
tackle made by Tate Hancock at just about the 44-yard line. Now we'll take a look at the offensive starters for Portland State, brought to you by Allegiance Benefit Plan Management. Joe Weiser's the quarterback. He throws an interception for every touchdown he throws, but he is the trigger man for this team that likes to run the ball. Along the offensive line, Nika Jackson Slater, uh, Sattler rather, comes in with 28 starts under his belt. He's the leader of that line. First down for the Vikings. Here's Ruben. Straight ahead, and it's a good gain. Gain of about four and a half. Now here's a look at the Montana defensive starters brought to you by Allegiance Benefit Plan Management. Mike Murphy, DN, Great Falls, Montana. Jonathan Jacobio Verona, defensive tackle, Medical Lake, Washington. Blake Horgan, D tackle, Spokane, Washington. Clint Spencer, defensive end, Malta, Montana. Lance Spencer and Mike Murphy, the two ends on this four-man front for the Grizzlies, now faced with a second and six are the Vikings. Ride to the right side, Ruben's number called again, taken out of bounds by Jimmy Wilson. Speaking of that Montana defense, here's the rest of them. Your starters from Allegiant Benefit, Allegiance Benefit Plan Management. Nick Vela, linebacker, Cash Rally, California. Adam Hogue, linebacker, Bozo, Montana. Shane McIntyre, linebacker, Helena, Montana. Kevin Cody Edwards, cornerback, Spokane, Washington. Tuff Harris, cornerback, Coastal, Montana. Matt Lebsock, safety, Billings, Montana. Vancouver, Cooper, safety, Dan Cotterall. Van Cooper, the third leading tackler on this club, the sophomore from Denver. 37 tackles coming in. And now it's third and six. Weiser has time, and he overshoots his man looking for Bodiford. And that's Sean Bodiford, number one. He's the hot target for the Vikings. He has 29 catches to lead this team and three touchdowns, but it's overshot and the Vikings will have to punt it away. Jason Daly, a transfer from Michigan State, will boot it over to Montana. Well, you can hear a sigh of relief that time by the defensive coaches for Montana. The receiver was actually open, but Weiser threw it just over his head. Levander Seeger stands at his own 10. Seegers broke a 1AA record two weeks ago for a number of career punt returns, closing in on the yardage record as well. Daly lets it go, good kick. Seegers has a chance, and he's brought down after a gain of about three yards. So at the 15-yard lines where the Montana Grizzlies will have their first possession, and here's a look at the Montana Grizzlies starters on offense. Starters brought to you by Allegiance Benefit Plan Management. We'll get to those starters after the first play. I can tell you who the starting quarterback is. That's Craig Oaks. And behind Oaks, the lone back, is Justin Green. Going to throw Levander Seegers. Good block on the outside to free him. John Tamlich with a great chop block. And he's up over the 25-yard line. First down for the Grizzlies on their first play. Here's those offensive starters. Craig Oaks, quarterback, Boulder, Colorado. Justin Green, running back, San Diego, California. John Talmadge, wide receiver, Anaheim, California. Levander Seegers, wide receiver, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Jefferson Heidelberger, wide receiver, Nevada City, California. Willie Walden, tight end, Vancouver, Washington. First down for Montana. Man in motion, Jayton Simpson. Oaks complete to Heidelberger. Craig Oaks two for two. Heidelberger, the leading receiver for the Grizzlies, and he's close to a first down. Here's the rest of the Montana offensive starters brought to you by Allegiance Benefit Plan Management. Corey Proctor, offensive line, Gig Harbor, Washington. Chris Orwig, left guard, Shawnee Mission, Kansas. Jay Green, center, Glasgow, Montana. Jeff Marshall, offensive line, Newport Beach, California. Brad Rhodes, offensive tackle, Bellingham, Washington. Second and a yard to go. Simpson again, the tight end in the game, and he's in motion. Green straight ahead, turned away, there to make the tackle. Number 24, Joey King, 
One of the guys at the bottom of the pile. Let's take a look at those starters for Portland State. And Chuck Jones anchors a defensive line that is big. And I mean big up front. Jones goes 6'4", 290. Chris Berg, number 55, is 3'10". And they have two linebackers set. They basically run a nickel. Joey King uh, tied for the team lead in tackles coming in. He's a good one along with Tolo Tuatelli, the other backer. Green did pick up the first down. Oaks escapes, balls to the ground. Portman State has it. Andrew Dorsey makes the play. I believe Dorsey stripped it, Bob, and then he recovered. Yeah, and Craig was uh, kind of biding his time there, not panicking at all, which is a trait of his. And he tried to scramble a little bit, got his hand up in there, and the ball came out. A huge turnover here for the Vikings and a big opportunity for them with field position. Right on the 30-yard line where Portland State will start. Tim Walsh talked to his team this week. I caught the end of practice yesterday about trying to match Montana's intensity. He said, if, we're, if we don't match intensity, we're not going to have a chance in this game. At least early on, it looks like their intensity is up. First and 10, Ruben. Johnny Verona there to meet him with others. It's a gain of three. That was Montana's third fumble of the season, so they have not put the ball on the ground too much this year. But that one cost them. And again, you mentioned the line. Really, Portland State on both sides, the offensive line and the defensive line. Their players are very physical and very big, uh, many of them at or near 300 pounds. Two freshmen on that offensive line for the Vikings. Second and six. Ruben can't get away. Montana had a stunt coming, and it's number 47. We've called his name a lot, Bob. We talked about him in the open. Shane McIntyre runs him down from behind to make the tackle. And what Portland State likes to do, as we mentioned, is run, but then also use the play action here and throw off of that. But Montana all over this little uh, run to the right side. Gang tackling. Ruben has been battling an ankle injury. Both of these backs, Ruben and Fuquay, and now it's Fuquay who's in the backfield, have been banged up. Um, Fuquay hasn't been 100% all year, if you ask Coach Walsh. Third down, about six yards to go. Heat coming, and incomplete. That time, Wiser looking for his tight end, Adam Whitehead, and it's incomplete. And it looks like uh, Daly's gonna come on along with the place kicker, Eric Azor, and they're going to try to kick a field goal here. Yeah, that was on Joe, as you mentioned, the quarterback. He had good time, good protection, little drag crossing route across the middle, and he just threw it behind the receiver. Just flat out missed him. So out of the hold of Daly, Eric Azor, 6 of 9 this year on field goal attempts, along of 49. This one from 43, and it's up, and it's no good. It's no good, so Azor misfires. The Montana defense holds. The Grizz will have it, and we come back. No score from Portland. Good stand there by the Montana defense uh, to force, number one, force the kick, and then, uh, luckily for Montana, Azor missed that. Man in motion is Heidelberger. The give is to Lex Hilliard. Hilliard with a gain of about two and a half on first down. One item that Coach Huck spoke of during the week two was how much this surface uh, doesn't favor Montana. It's just a real bad surface for footing, and he didn't feel the team would be uh, liking to it at much at all. And it does look, as you walk on it, it's quite worn. Second down now for the Grizz. Oaks to Seegers, and Seegers wrapped up right away, and that's big number 89, that's Chuck Jones. Uh, we talked about him off the top in the starting lineups, and he's a good one, he makes the tackle. And as you mentioned, Bob, this surface, um, it's not AstroTurf, it's called Next Turf, and it was put in about four years ago. And in talking to the facilities people here yesterday, they said the first season and a half it was here, it was great, it had some give to it, had good traction almost like what's in Washington Grizzly Stadium. But after a year, it lost all the sponge, and now it's hard as a rock, almost like the old AstroTurf. So it's only four years old, but they'd like to get rid of it if they could. 
Third down. Oaks has got plenty of time. He's going to go deep. He's got a man. Heidelberger's got a step. And it's incomplete. In and out of his hands. The coverage came late. And it was provided by Nick Chenault, number two. But boy, Heidelberger had a couple of steps. And we've seen Craig this year go deep often when he has a shot. We In their last game, they did it as well when there are people open underneath for a first down. But he's been coached to do this because the play was there. It was just a case of uh, defense did kind of catch up right at the end. Heidelberger had to hang up, and that ball nearly picked off by Chenault. So Tyson Johnson's in. The punt returner is Brendan Ferrigno. Averaging about 12 and a half yards per return. Bad kick. Bad, bad punt there. Tyson Johnson has been great this year, as he was a year ago. Sophomore from Stevensville, he came in averaging 43.6 yards per punt. That's third the big sky for that one. It happens to everybody. He just caught it off the side of his foot. Yeah, you can see Coach Huck talking to him as he comes off. Of course, he coaches special teams during the week and uh, mentioning it. But, you know, Portland State, Tom, has just owned field position today off the first possession, then a fumble, and now they're setting up shop, you know, almost on the 30-yard line. Looks like Bobby Houck was upset the wrong ball was in the game. I think uh, they had requested a different ball to come in to kick that ball, and Houck not happy with that. Well, again, Portland is just loving this field position. That was a three-yard punt. Three yards that time off the shank. Weiser takes a big hit, but it's complete across the right side to Ryan Brown, but Weiser got level. I believe it may have been Blake Horgan Possibly John Cahill. Couldn't catch the number at the end, but Weiser took a big hit. But complete to Ryan Brown, the senior wide out for the Vikings out of Western Oregon. Transfer a couple of years ago. Hasn't played much this year. He's been hurt, but he gets the catch there. Take a look here. It was John Cahill put the hit out of that. Yeah, guy. I think his back was the first thing to hit after that tackle. Now the eye formation. Kennett, the fullback in. Alan Kennett in front of Rubin. And it is number 23 with the run. And Troy Bierman makes the play for the Grizz. Bierman, one of a handful of young linebackers. Bierman's a true freshman, but you look at the young kids that have been playing for this Montana defense at linebacker. Redshirt freshman Lauren Utterback. Redshirt freshman Alex Hawthorne. Redshirt freshman Kyle Ryan. We'll see all those guys today. And Coach Huck talks about their incredible speed and how they can come in and keep pace with the people that started or even increase the team's speed once they're in. Second down, flags on the play, flag right as the ball was snapped. Delay a game is going to be the call, and that'll back the Vikings up and do a third down in about 11. Coach Walsh, I'm sorry, Bob, talking to Coach Walsh this week, uh, his keys were, number one, we need to be mentally ready to play. You know, you have a ball club that loses two games in the last 10 minutes, two weeks in a row. You don't want to lose those guys because, really, uh, you don't know if they're playing for a conference title anymore at one and three. And now they got to be the spoiler. We have to be mentally ready. And as far as uh, his defense, he said we can't allow Montana to have any big plays. They need a big play right here. Another flag. I think we have a false start this time. Yeah, I believe the tight end on the right side jumped just a little bit. That's two in a row for the Vikings. They're backing themselves up here. So what was a second and six will now become a second and 16. Well, Portland always, you know, Portland State loves to play the Grizzlies here in Portland. It seems like they play very well over the years. I know we've done some great games here. I think of the 99 game that was just a score fest that Montana was fortunate enough to come out on top on overtime. Two years ago, they had a great ball game, too, in Montana with a comfort behind win. This is Bodiford, and Bodiford just falls down. Bodiford can't make it go. And it's a gain of just about a yard, and that's it. So it'll be third and long now uh, for the Vikings. 
Well, this is where Montana would love to keep Portland State is in passing situations because that is not their bread and butter. They love to run the ball. They can throw, but it's not their forte, and I'm sure the Montana coaches love this position of third and long. To the line of scrimmage they come, two wide outs, split to the right side, Bottiford along with Brown. Wise has got all kinds of time. Now some heat coming, he pulls it down, and it's incomplete. Incomplete pass, and it'll be fourth down now. Well, Weiser that time did a smart thing. He, he was flushed out of the pocket, but he didn't panic and he didn't throw it away. And I'm sure Coach Walsh talked to him about that this, this week. Said, look, we can, we can ill afford interceptions against a great Montana defense. So if you get in trouble, throw it away or run out of bounds. This one just gets away from him as he uh, thought better of throwing it across the middle. Azor, after that first miss, is six of 10 on the season. This kick, if it gets there, it's got a chance, but it's short. So he misses from 43. Two misses, two chances for the Vikings. Montana defense so far holding strong. No score. Welcome back to Portland and PGE Park. No score here midway through the first quarter. Montana with a first and 10. Oaks has Heidelberger, and Heidelberger has about seven yards on first down. A couple of scores to pass along. We just got in with a minute left in the second quarter. Weber State on top of Idaho State, 17 to seven. And at the half, Eastern Washington uh, on top of Sacramento State, 24 to three. No surprise in that one. You know, it's Montana offense for how good they've been at times. They've been slow starters, Bob. Only three touchdowns all year in the first quarter. So first quarter scoring, Hasn't been their forte. Craig Oaks, though, off to a good start. Four of five for 28 yards. Second and short. Favorite kind of distance and down for Rob Fennessy. Balls on the ground, and Dorsey has his second fumble recovery of the ball game. Well, that was going to be my comment a second ago, is that Montana, I'm sure Coach Oak or the offensive coaches are saying, look, go out and sustain a drive give this defense a break and move the ball. We don't care if you score, but for heaven's sakes, don't turn it over. And that's, you know, that's way too many times in a quarter to give your defense such bad position. And sooner or later, it's gonna come back to Hanna. The exchange between Oaks and Green just didn't happen. Well, even great teams are gonna do that once too often. And that may be a case of it right here. The two turnovers inside their own 40-yard line. So far, it hasn't resulted in any PSU points. Montana up against it here. Weiser going back the other way. A lot of room for Bottiford. A lot of room and a blocker, and he's gonna get in. Touchdown, Portland State. Well, this is a real pretty play here, Tom. It's a little screen back to the uh, left side. They, they fake it to the right, and then they come back underneath, and you can see the guard and tackle slip out to the corner with him, and then it's down the sideline, and again, the defense is just going, oh my goodness, we're not out here again. I need a break, and, and it's a touchdown for Portland, and it's a tough way to start a game. He caught a good block by his right guard, Mike Stackowick, down the field to help spring him in the last five yards. Vikings capitalize. They strike first. Seven nothing from Portland. Matt Langford is the kickoff specialist for the Vikings. He lets her go and Heidelberger from the five. Montana second in the conference and kick returns. Heidelberger's crossed the 35 to the 40, but there's flags down. There are flags down. I believe this could be a hold on Montana. I don't know if Heidelberger may maybe caught a face mask too, but I think it's going to go against the Grizz as a hold. Yep, you are correct, Tom. So this one's going to come back. And I know Montana was excited to get some returns uh, because they felt Portland would kick to him. So that'll back up the Grizz and nullify what would have been a big return for Heidelberger. 
you know, as a coach, looking at Coach Houck here, when you start like this, you just want to, it just feels down. weird to you. And you just want to grab your guys and say, look, just settle down. We're okay. We can do this. But it's, it's a weird feeling when a really good team starts slow like this. Well, Montana, Montana, no stranger this. Two weeks ago, they were down 10 zip right away uh, to Eastern Washington, and they came back there. Here is uh, your scoring drive brought to you by MontanaGrizzlies.com. One play, 27 yards for Botterford. Here's Hilliard, left side, got room to run. Good run on first down. He's up and over the 30, and a gain of 12, and a first down for the Grizz. I always get a kick out of watching Lex run the ball. He is so gifted, and he, he reminds me of Johansi Humphrey, another great back at Montana, uh, a little bit before his tenure, but he is so good. He runs north and south well. He's shifty, and he's just really fun to watch. He always looks like he's about one step from breaking it all the way. You can see him here get into the hole and then get upfield. A week ago, Lex Hill, you had 116 yards and a career high three rushing touchdowns, or two weeks ago against Eastern Washington. He's got room again. Knocked out of bounds and thrown to the ground, far off the sidelines. Grizz fans want a penalty flag. It's not going to come, but another huge hole on that left side. And left side of that line, anchored by senior left tackle Corey Proctor number 75 making some room over there for Hilliard to run. Well Montana coaches talked about the ability to handle Portland State's defensive front and you can see they're attacking the left side here it's two in a row to the left and they're going off tackle because they feel the uh, front middle or the middle front of the defense is their strength. Hilliard three carries 26 yards here's his fourth not as much this time It'll be second and long for the Montana Grizzlies. But Hilliard really, uh, really turned it on two weeks ago in Cheney. As mentioned, 116 yards and a career high three rushing touchdowns in that ball game. And he was, he was kind of the spark for that Montana offense, and they needed it. He provided some big runs. It looks like he may have tweaked his ankle on that last run. He came off hobbling a little bit. We'll see if he can walk that off. But he's bent over on the sideline right now. Oak's going to go out of the shotgun. Tyler Berger, Hancock, and now Justin Green motions out of the slot to protect. Oaks want to come down the left seam, but he's taken down, and the play made by number 92, Noah Wright. Wright came in this game with three sacks, and that's his fourth sack of the season. And I believe Willie Walden was all alone in the middle of the field, but Craig uh, pulled the ball down about the time he saw him, I think, and then he tried to flush up the middle, and they were able to contain him. This Portland State defense uh, is able to oftentimes stop the run with as little as six guys because of the strength of their tackles. And Rob Fennessy, the offensive coordinator for the Grizz, said this week, if we can't run on six guys, then we got a big time problem. On this series, they're gonna have to throw on third and long. Going deep, and he overshot his men. Heidelberger, along with Seegers, both now going down the seam, and Montana will have to punt. So the Portland State defense holds Oh, another time here against the Grizzlies. Well, and you mentioned uh, their strength up front. Chuck Jones, number 89, 6'4". You can see him coming in here right at the end. He gives Craig a lick uh, right at the end of the throw, but he is a great player. They're going to have to figure out how to contain him. Rob Fennessy said that he wants to throw the ball deep today. He said, we're going to go deep uh, because the Grizz should have time to throw. Now, so far, the Vikings have got some pressure, but this Portland State team, for as good as they are defensively, are last in the league in sacks. They don't have a whole lot of sacks coming in. Here's Tyson Johnson. High kick. And fair catch called for by Ferrigno at the nine-yard line, and that's where the Vikings will have it. Let's take a look at our first quarter trivia question brought to you by Don Edson Ford. Good selection week coming up, Bob. In what year did the Grizz and the Vikings first play, and who was president of the U.S. at that time? Test your presidential expertise. Here we go. Vikings on the first down from the eight. It's Ruben. And Ruben straight ahead, breaking tackles and carrying people. 
and that's what he brings to the table. He's a more physical back than Fuqua. He's incredibly strong for his size, if you ask the Portland State coaches, and he has a gain of six yards. Here's the answer to that first quarter trivia question brought to you by Don Adson Ford. In what year did the Grizz and the Vikings first play, and during that year, who was president of the United States? Okay, we'll do that in just one minute. How about after this play? Give you an extra play to think about it. Second and about four yards. Grizz with a five-man front. Adam Hogue comes on a stunt. They've got Ruben in the backfield initially, and a short gain tackle made by Hogue along with Mike Stadnick. Here's the answer. Well, I think it's a young uh, rivalry, so I would say Johnson. Nice. Well done, Bob. Not as old as some of the teams they played in the conference, like Montana State, etc. <laughs> yeah. Off our back. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be, <laughs> that would be a, we'd have to look Over that one up. Years. Ruben, seven carries, 21 yards in the early going. Pro formation, Wiser, lots of time, and it's dropped. It's dropped by Brown. Ryan Brown was open, and he couldn't make the play. The coverage that time provided by Jimmy Wilson. You know, the quarterback took a real lick again. You know, those are going to take their toll as the game goes on. But, Tom, that was kind of typical of what the seasons have been so far for the Vikings in terms of passing the ball. They've had a lot of drops, and there was an example of that right there. That ball should have been caught. They did. They had two big drops uh, against NAU. Drops in the end zone last week. So you're right, that, that has plagued them. So here is Daly, and we have flags down. It looks like, false start. Looked like one of the backs uh, jumped just a little bit in anticipation of the snap. That'll back him up. Lavander Seegers is at his own 45. These teams are both uh, having trouble on third down so far. Combined 0-6 between the Grizz and the Vikings. PSU 0 for 4 on third down. That's why they're kicking this one here. Daly gets it away. Seegers is going to have a chance. And brought down from behind. Joey King, number 24. That's kind of a guy you'll probably hear a lot about today. His number called. He's tied for the team lead in tackles. And he makes the play. But the Grizzlies here are going to have some great field position, Bob. And they're going to have to start capitalizing uh, when they can get down inside Portland State territory in a game that could have a lot to do with field position with how good the defenses are. I totally agree with that point, Tom. Uh, they need to not only sustain a couple first downs, they need to come out with some points here real quick. So after a 37-yard punt, Montana has it at the 46. Colt Palmer, number 45, is the man in motion. They give the green back behind block from Palmer. Green submarines his way for a gain of about two. This Montana offense comes in uh, right in the middle of the big sky in terms of running the ball. They average 123 yards per game on the ground uh, due to the Grizzlies. And the rush defense for Portland State, uh, third in the league, giving up 119 yards per game. I'm wondering too a little bit the slow start that Montana is feeling right now or experiencing. I wonder if the week off might have made him a little rusty. Three wide outs. Oak's going to swing out. Tate Hancock has got room and he has a first down. It's a real nice play here. The little stretch pass. I love these Tom because it stretches the defense. It's a lot like a run or a sweep but you get him outside. You have everybody's got to chase him now. They got to run 20 or 30 yards to try to make the play and boy that helps your uh, team quite a bit. Hancock that's his 25th catch of the season. He has two touchdowns so far this year. For a Grizzly offense that really spreads the ball around. The receivers numbers stats wise are good across the board. Oaks can go to a lot of guys. He's got time here. Finds number 30 again. Hancock wide open. Just sat down in the pocket. And Craig Oaks found him. Yeah, give Craig a lot of credit on that beautiful play. He, a uh, little play action. 
He looks downfield. He's looking for the touchdown. It's not there. So he checks back underneath and a beautiful throw. Eighteen yard pickup. And so a first and ten from the fourteen. Viking show blitz, they come with it. And it pays off. Tackle made by Chuck Jones. Andrew Dorsey, number 17, there as well. That's the end of the first quarter. Montana looking to even things up here. We'll see if they can do that when we come back. The Vikings on top, 7-0.